teams to SES. Um, we've seen that Grim, uh, Grim was around a while ago, but uh, Sugar Gliders are a new addition. They have experienced players, but um, this is, I believe, their third time playing in SES. Indeed, they are uh, new entries to the competition lately, it seems. So this will be interesting to watch. All right, here we go. First off, we got the uh, Nibelug. It is a module piloted by Dulac. It has a uh, left side Artemis top gap bottom and a right side Artemis top gap bottom. And we have the final confluence. It is a goldfish of watchfish piloted by Muse Grimmick with uh, side carronades. All right, and on blue team we have the HMS Discombobulator. It is a all watcher galleon, left side gatling gun, and a rear mortar piloted by Lord Scottsworth, or Lord Scottworth. My apologies. The Dirty Caroline has Zali. It is a double Hades left side, or it is a junker with double Hades left side, gat banshee right side, and a front gatling gun as well. Piloted by Hungover NG. So this will be some interesting combinations of guns. The Macha Galleon, a lot of people tend to see. It's a very reliable close range ship. Double Hades Junker is pretty new though, I think. It's gonna have a lot of hull stripping power, especially on the right side. They're gonna have that Banshee in tandem with two Gatling gun, it looks like they're gonna go for it. What are your thoughts on Red Team here? Uh, red team, I mean, with the mobile, this will be an interesting choice. They're, um, they have a, well, they got two gats and an Artemis. Uh, at least one of their gats has greased ammo. Oh, they have the life flag on top, I mean. Which, against these, these blue ships, normally, um, I wouldn't pick. Because these, uh, I mean, we'll, we'll see how it goes. This watchfish can definitely, uh, really pick apart these blue ships with their, uh, watch in the front. Alright, I can't help but notice that one of the engineers on- oh, we got combat, actually. Good watch it going off on the, uh, discombobulator. Yep, discombobulator seems to be completely disabled, but the goldfish is by himself against these two ships. The goldfish will be okay uh, for a second while, uh, until the, uh, Chunk gets to get or got Banshee on them. There we go, the Pasha going out. Yeah, Goldfish uh, pinning down both those ships, actually. The Mobula is not in really in a position to do much about the Galleon, though, because the building is in the way. Moving around the building. Dirty Coraline, though, seems like he'll be pinned down by that Goldfish for quite a bit. Mobula has to be a little bit careful here. He doesn't want to... Mobulas are kind of resistant to watches, but uh, they can't take too much... Uh... Sable. And the Junker is starting to get the uh, better of the fish. But I, mean, I see both these uh, red teams are just focusing down the uh, discombobulator right now. And a good amount of uh, hole damage. Yeah, I would say that the Junker got the better of the fish because the fish decided to swap over to Galleon. Uh, it seemed to actually help disable him from the Mobula. And then he's turning to Junker, I guess? A lot of tar going out. I wonder whose tar that was. Both the other Junker and the fish have tar. And there we go, uh, Galleon going down. <laughs> I think the... there's both of their tar, actually. I think that tar cloud's twice as big <laughs> as a normal tar. I think you're right. They just both tarred each other. Oh, the Galleon went down, however, to the Mobula's Gaflax. And now the Mobula has turned away from the Junker. Okay, he's turning back to the Junker. I think this Junker is in dire straits here. It is a 2v1. And again, the fish is kind of disabled. They were they were eating the back end of that tar and lost their engines and a gun, but they will still be able to pick up this kill on the bottom. Oh, a surprise spawned by the galleon. However, right in front of the double get flak mobula, that that may down. not be beneficial. They're helping their ally a bit with this uh, the watch fish. The watch is not too effective. A lot of them hitting the balloon, but these life flaks going straight into the uh, discombobula, doing a ton of damage. Yeah, Discombobulator feeling the pain from these two gats and that Flak from that Mobula. It's not quite dead yet, but I think it's about to be finished. Oh no, Flax went wide. Oh, but it didn't matter, the Flash finished off the jumper oh, anyway. I and can't believe the... that Galliana 
and they they actually got the kill in the galleon. The the, the the light flat gun was so damaged; it was shooting so slowly. That was really too bad. But um, they still managed to pick up the kill. And normally, guys, if your gun's damaged, then don't bother shooting it, especially if it's heavily damaged. Just immediately get off and repair it, so you can do all the extra damage. And they do have a yeah, gunner on the light flak using their burst ammo mostly, which is able to uh, do quite a bit, like. Uh, I believe at least 800 of whole damage to a galleon. Yeah, I couldn't help but notice that Engineer had burst rounds, and I was wondering if he was actually just going to mostly be using the Artemis rather than the Gatling gun, but he might be loading Gatling gun into that. Okay. Burst rounds into that Gatling gun, not loading that Gatling gun into the burst rounds. Yeah. And really, you should always use, uh, you should avoid using burst ammo in the Gat because it uh, slows down your uh, damage for a second. Indeed. Well, honestly, two Gatling guns have more than enough damage per second to go around, though. And but one... having two Greased will strip very quickly more than enough for any ship. And one Gat is technically enough to break a Galleon's armor while the Galleon is repairing with a mallet. Uh, then again, that's if you hit every single shot. Or every shot except for one with your Gat. But Gats are very powerful armor shippers, and they can one-clip anything. Technically. Sure can. Looks like we got a bit of a ring around the rosy going on on this match right now. One team's heading west on the south, the other team's heading north, or heading east. Oh, nope, looks like Red's going booking it straight south now, though. Yeah, Red at a good advantage right here. They barely lost, and they, they only lost a tiny chunk of health in this uh, goldfish. All able to pick up three kills on the sugar gliders. Sorry, say again, I... I was reading over chat, logs, ah! Uh, I'm new at this, guys. No, please, don't hurt me. <laughs> just mentioning that the, uh, that the red team's at a good advantage, since they only lost a tiny bit of health, and they picked up three kills. Ah, uh, yes, and they have the much vaunted uh, first kill advantage there. So All in right. the event of a tie game, they'll have the lead. Or they'll okay. have the favor. Good well, it looks like we have Hotchess going out on this combo. Yeah, good disable, good disable. Junker, however, retaliating against the Goldfish. Goldfish again, putting himself right in the middle of the action. Oh, Hotch is going out as he gets stripped by Junker. That Goldfish is not... They tried to pop a tire, I think he's but regretting I... it this time. <laughs> goldfish is going down. I mean, the Goldfish has definitely been trying, and it's been doing, getting some pretty... And pretty good engagements on these blue ships. Getting a, we saw the first engagement the red team had. It was able to lock down, practically lock down both the uh, blue ships for a second, but their mobula wasn't able to uh, get in in time and then do enough damage. Yeah, it seems like the same mistake here happened. Only this time they were actively punished for it, as the goldfish once again charged in first, disables the galleon, and then the mobula was slow to trail behind. And this time blue was actually able to take advantage of that. However, Goldfish spawning in, flanking blue team automatically. It looks like he's going rising up after that galleon to watch him out. I was seeing these. Uh, if the galleon notices or responds, or it looks like it won't need to. Mavila goes down as the galleon gets hit by Hancha. We saw those uh, double Hades breaking the armor on the on the Mavila. Double Hades can be uh, effective against Mavilas, especially if you don't use a. Uh, if you're not having enough chem spray on your balloon. Um, but yeah. Another good disable from this fish, able to uh, with the with the Huacha, this powerful, they're able to break the the whole left side of this galleon. Find themselves some time to escape. Blue team isn't able is going isn't going to be able to uh, uh, keep up with them. I guess the fish kind of just has to make a bit of a choice when he engages. Do you want to hit the junker and remove their stripping power, or the majority of their stripping power? Do you want to hit the but risk Quatchas, or do you want to disable the Quatcha and then take double Gatling or double Haunt Hades? Another excellent watch on the Galleon. Able to break everything. Mobile is back. Getting their, uh... Yep, looks like their target is going to be the Galleon, but they are in really close range for that Flak. That Flak not doing nearly as much damage as we saw earlier. Now, one thing about the, the Galleon focusing down that fish. Actually, it looks like both of them are going after that fish. Yeah. They're going after that fish as that Mobula swings his... Oh, Hwacha going out onto the Galleon. That's going to help supplement the kill power the Mobula needs at this range. 
There we go. And the Mobula picks it up with a bl point blank right. flag. The Junker should be able to get this kill. One problem with the Junker here is that they're just, uh, let's see what ammo, yeah, they all have greased. Um, but they're able to break this fish's uh, armor just, uh, fine. They only have one Banshee for killing, though. Which, a fish has 1,100 hull, which is almost as much as the Galleon. And one Banshee just isn't quite enough to, uh, seriously hurt a fish. I can agree with that as a squid pilot myself. <laughs> that goldfish can take quite a few clips, especially because the quick rebuild on the hull armor plus goldfish. Not all the Banshees are going to get through to that armor. Then again, one Banshee It's or... even got the reload time of a mortar as well, too. Yes, e I, yeah, it does. Six seconds. This Junker's in a bad place. I think this is the end. Indeed. The Double Gatling Mobula does have the advantage against the Junker, as the Junker is all armor, no hull. And while a, uh, while a life lack and arm timer or a Banshee isn't enough to kill a fish, it is plenty to kill a Junker. Indeed. Well, that is match one. Looks like 5-3 to the Sexy Cage Dancers.